Okay, so the topic of this video is the genetics inheritance pattern called incomplete dominance. Let's get started. So here's our cartoonish family we've been working with for the past uh, several videos. Remember, Joshua was diagnosed with PKU, it's autosomal recessive. Then we met Lucas, diagnosed with Huntington's disease, autosomal dominant. Then we met Andrea, she's a carrier of hemophilia, which is sex linked. And then Sophia was in a car accident, and we used that to understand co dominance with her blood type. Now, Nicholas, let's hear from him today. It says, Mom, Dad, something really cool happened at school today. Hey, buddy, what happened? Miss Martin has a class bunny rabbit named Floppy. A few weeks ago, she looked so lonely. I remember Floppy. We babysat her one weekend when Miss Martin was out of town. Well, Mr. Dahlberg also has a class bunny. His name is Flippy. We thought Flippy and Floppy would like to play together, so we placed them in the same cage. She and he got along so well, they played all day long, crawling and climbing on top of each other. When Mr. Dahlberg find out, found out, he seemed a little worried, so he took Flippy back into his cage. Well, when I got to school today, there was a lot of excitement. There were five baby bunnies in the cage with Floppy. She's not lonely anymore. You know, some of the bunnies were white, some were black, some were gray. So let's look at the pattern called incomplete dominance. This is where neither allele is completely dominant over the other. And so in this case, we have a purebred, which is another way of saying a homozygous white rabbit. And I'm going to use W's for the white alleles. And then there was a purebred homozygous black bunny rabbit. And I'm going to use B for black. And so how do you end up with the gray? Well, you have one parent passes down the white allele, one parent passes down the black allele. Now, if white was dominant, the babies would be white. If black was dominant, the babies would be black. But with incomplete dominance, they blend together. Neither allele is completely dominant, and so they blend together, and you get the color gray. And so the heterozygous individuals, in this case, the gray is, uh, is the heterozygous uh, color, is, is the blended phenotype. Notice from the allele combination in the picture, one white allele and one black allele. Again, that's the heterozygous, also known as a hybrid. So the hybrids have a blended phenotype. And so for this reason, you can often see more than two different phenotypes. You know, when Mendel did his experiments with pea plants, the, plant, the, the flowers were either purple or white. There was no blended third color. The, the color of the pods was either yellow or green. There was no blended third color. That's because those plants followed a different pattern of inheritance. We are following the pattern of inheritance right now called incomplete dominance. Let's go back to our story for a moment. Well, hello, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Dahlberg. Well, hello, Miss Martin. These are the two teachers. It, you know, it's kind of crazy to see gray, black, and white babies. Both Flippy and Floppy are gray. Well, actually, it's quite simple to explain. Both Flippy and Floppy are heterozygous for gray. So their genotype would be a W and a B allele. Let's do this Punnett square. So there's the genotype of Flippy, gray, uh, with a combination of white and black. And there's the genotype of Floppy. Floppy was a gray bunny rabbit, combination of white and black. When we fill in the Punnett squares, top left, I hope you see, would produce a white furred rabbit. The square in the top right would produce a gray, square, uh, a gray a furred bunny rabbit. The square in the bottom left would also produce a gray furred bunny rabbit. And the square in the lower right would produce a black furred bunny rabbit. Oh, wow. Each baby had a 25% chance to be white, 25% chance to be black, and a 50% chance to be gray.
You know, once the babies are a bit older, some of the parents have agreed to adopt them and provide them with a good home. Well, that's wonderful. I think we need to keep the cages locked in the future. So let's look at another example of incomplete dominance in only this time with flowers. You know, carnations are a great example. If we look at the carnation flower petals that we see here, red is actually a purebred homozygous color. White petaled carnations is actually a purebred uh, white homozygous combination. And so what happens if a flower passes down one, uh, what happens if a new, the next generation inherits one red allele? and one white allele where the colors blend and the offspring would appear pink. And so in this practice problem, if I ask you to cross a red flowered parent with a pink flowered parent, what might that look like in a Punnett square? Well, here's my Punnett square and the red flowered parent, I'm going to use two R's to represent red. Now be careful with pink. I'm not using P and P for pink. Pink is not a purebred homozygous color. Pink is a heterozygous color. So I'm, I have to remember to use R and W for red and white. And now when I fill in the Punnett squares, I can see the top left square would produce a red flowered uh, individual. The top right, a pink flowered individual. Top left, or the bottom left. Bottom left would produce a red flowered individual. And the bottom right would produce a pink flowered individual. So notice incomplete dominance is very similar to codominance. Codominance we, I explained in a different video, but the two patterns are similar. They're not exactly the same though. The pink uh, flower that you see in the picture, this would be an example of incomplete dominance where the, uh, the heterozygous individual appears as the blended color. The two parents of this pink flowered uh, individual were probably white and red. But look at the picture on the right. This would be an example of codominance. It's also heterozygous, but the red and the white are not blending to make pink. Notice you see patches of red, patches of white. You see some petals are red, some petals are white. You see both red and white at the same time. That's codominance. So I hope you see the difference between the two. Here's another practice problem right here. Go ahead and pause the video, try to answer these two questions. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So let me make a key first of all. In the story, I hear that blue, two capital B's would be the genotype for blue, and two capital Y's could be the genotype for yellow. And I'm trying to, I'm in the story, I'm told to use a green individual. So does that mean I should use two G's for green? No. Green is the heterozygous blended color. So green would actually be one B and one Y. And if you, uh, if you have a mistake right there, that's really gonna screw up your Punnett square. So now I am told in the question, there's a blue male, so two capital Bs, and then a green female, one B and one Y. And when I fill in the Punnett squares now, hopefully you can see the correct combination. In the top left square, this would produce a blue fish. The top right would produce a green fish. The bottom left, a blue fish, and the bottom right, a green fish. So now I can look at question A. What's the probability of obtaining a heterozygous fish? It's 50%. The two squares that have the B and the Y in the genotype, that's the heterozygous color, or he the heterozygous combination. And then question B, what are the odds of producing a yellow fish? The answer is 0%. Here's another example. Go ahead and pause the video and try to answer these questions right here. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. So first of all, I'm going to create a pedigree for the nine flowers. I am told in the story, a pink colored male and a pink colored female. So there's my square for male and circle for female. And I colored them pink just to, you know, coordinate. Seven seeds were created. And so I have seven branches there and three of the seeds ended up growing pink flowers and two of the seeds grew white flowers and two of the seeds grew red flowers. So that's kind of what my, my pedigree might look like right there. And uh, I know the genotype of the pink parents are R and W. And so when I look at the three offspring that are pink, their genotype must be R and W. 
What about the genotype of the two white offspring? That would be W and W. What about the genotype of the two red offspring? That would be R and R. And so when I look at the Punnett square, there's the pink male, uh, let's say, and there's the pink female, let's say, and then we fill in the Punnett squares. You can see the square in the top left would produce a red flowered individual, top right, a pink flowered individual, the bottom left, a pink flowered individual, and the bottom right, a white flowered individual. So when I look at question C, what is the probability of growing pink? The answer is 50%. You can see the two squares out of four are pink. So there you go, uh, an explanation of incomplete dominance. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.